So today we're going to look at zigzag springs, how to put them into your frame, how to cut them, etc. Now here's a few tools you may need to install your zigzag springs. A good hammer, uh, a wire cutter is probably the most important thing. A good heavy duty wire cutter is like you can get at Lowe's or Home Depot. They usually sell for $15 to $30. And of course you'll need the springs. We sell them here at Fabric Farms Interiors. Get more than you need because you can always cut it down but you can't make it bigger. You'll need some uh, nails with heads here. Uh, usually they're about an inch long. You can get them at the hardware store. Here's a couple of them right here also. And uh, you'll also need a drill probably. Uh, a screwdriver of some sort. I attach that into my drill. You may need a pliers and also some spring tie which we sell here at Fabric Farms and Tears, both in the polyester and the jute versions. Get a little more than you need. You can always cut it down. So let's go over to our chair frame right here. And you can put it up on a table or if you happen to have horses, you can do that. All right, now in this particular chair frame, we're putting uh, four rows of springs Let's talk about the spring here. crypts just briefly here. We sell these at Fabric Farms and Tears. And uh, you can see here I've already installed these three spring clips and then back here these three spring clips. Now it's a good idea to set your spring clips down and make a mark with a pen or pencil where each of the ones are going to be and make sure that they're directly across from the other spring clip. Then after you've made your mark it's a good idea to take your drill and drill a pilot hole here before you put your nail in there because if you don't sometimes you'll split the wood so go ahead and drill a pilot hole there first where you need it okay now it could be that you're just replacing one row of springs because perhaps your springs have broken so how much uh, how what length of springs do you need well you can get a rough idea by taking your tape measure and measuring across here and you can see that these springs are roughly 18 inches Okay, mm -hmm. uh, but it, suppose that you don't have any springs at all, then you have to decide for yourself how big they're going to be. Okay, um, now our springs are nine gauge springs, uh, good heavy seat springs. The distance between each of these bumps here is one and a half inches. Okay. All right. Now, in this particular case, if I didn't know that these were 18 inches, I would have to figure it out on my own. So a good way to do that is to get a length of spring slightly bigger than you think you're going to need. So, you know, you can measure across here and maybe you get 17 inches, maybe cut 20 inches. Okay. Then, all right, so we've got our two springs clips set on either side. How much springs do we need, assuming we don't know already? Well, what you do is you go ahead and put your spring into the back clip. Be careful. You don't want this to slip out and hit you. Okay, so make sure it's securely in the back clip. And then you can go ahead and pull it. And you want to pull it to the point where you really can't pull it anymore. Um, and it's probably about right there. Okay. So now you can uh, take a measurement. Start with your first bump back here and you go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 bumps. So that means I'm going to cut it right here. Okay. So I'll just keep my finger. You could take a little piece of chalk. Let me go grab it. So that means we're going to cut here. this right about there. Okay. I could try to cut it while it's in here, but it's probably a little safer. Go ahead and take this out. Oop, you may have to pull it just a little bit. There you go. Okay, there's our mark right there. Okay, so I'm going to take my wire cutter and make the cut right there. Like so. Now I've got my 11 bumps there. So we'll put it back into the clip here and then stretch it back over. Is there a tool that you can use if you don't have the strength for pulling them? 
Um, yeah, there's not really a tool. Uh, you can uh, have someone help you. It's not a bad idea, I suppose. You're really going to pull these springs so that they about as tight as you can get them. And you can see there's an arch. It's probably, oh, the arch is probably an inch and a half to two inches. We've got Something all like four that. of our springs in here. Now we want to make sure that this clip is closed. See, I've done this already on these three by placing in uh, another nail. All right. Now I did take my drill and I did it drilled a little pilot hole here already. So there is a slight little hole there to help me out a little bit. And I'll go ahead and take my nail here and go ahead. Now this is at a slight, you can see that's slightly um, slanted. It's not straight in. Okay. And then you just go ahead and hammer it in. Okay. You want to hammer it in so about as review, far as you, you can. You can see each of the spring clips now have two nails. Okay. The second nail is just hold it in place so nothing's going to move here. All right, now you're basically set to go, but uh, what will happen is when people sit on it, these springs can move from side to side. So what we're going to do now is we're going to get some spring twine uh, and join these together so that they act in unison and by adding the spring time twine, they're less likely to pull to the side and become loose from the spring clip. So I don't know if uh, Leslie's going to film all of this, but we're going to go ahead and get our length of spring tie. Uh, you know, get a little more than you actually need. How do you and measure it? What's that? How do you measure it? Uh, well, as you know, okay, the distance from here to here, you know, maybe you figure that's um, 20 inches. Maybe get 25 inches or more of your spring tie. We sell it in the polyester and also the jute. All right, now in order to do this, you'll have to have either some nails you can do it with nails or some uh, staples I'll show you both ways okay if you did it with the nails again it's not a bad idea to put a pilot hole you're gonna put one in the middle one towards the end and one over this way so at least three you could put in more if you want and make it even more secure but I think at least three is good so if I were to drill a pilot hole here and then go directly across. You can measure it if you want, sure. All right, I'll go ahead and hammer one here. Don't put it down all the way, just part way. One here. Here. All right, so go ahead and take your spring tie and bring it over to your first um, nail and just circle it a couple times like that. Okay. Oops, it uncircled itself, didn't it? Okay, one, two. Then while you're holding that, go ahead and hammer that all the way down. Okay, now that spring tie can't move. Go over to the second string. Tie a knot. The third spring, second spring. There we go. Fourth spring. Tie a knot. Fourth spring. Tie a knot, or you can even sometimes you can even just wrap it around. That work too. Okay, so now it's tied all the way across. We're back here to the other side. And then pull it tight. You can see it'll move just a little bit. And then wrap it around that nail again a couple times. Like so. Once you got it, uh, grab your uh, hammer, which is over here. Aha. Uh -huh. right, my hammer says Bernie on it. You can put your own name on yours. Okay, and then we'll hammer it down. So the purpose of this is now these springs back here aren't going to be moving from side. You can see they still move on this side, but over here, they don't really move at all. 
So that's the purpose of the spring tie over here. All right, now I'm going to go ahead and put one in the middle. All the way across now we'll do one more okay this time I'm gonna do it slightly different I'll be right back but what you do is you just take your uh, spring tie lay it across where you want it take your staple gun okay now you have to have a good heavy staple gun if you don't I recommend going ahead and doing this method staple a couple staples bring it back a couple more like that you can even do it one more time if you want so there you go you've got that nice and firm there and that's quicker we'll go ahead and tie this across okay I'm just wrapping it around there a little back like that or you can tie a knot it doesn't really make too much difference pulling this one over on the second spring back over to the third spring now again these don't have to be exactly straight across but and then over to the last one. Oh, let's put it right here. Like that. Then pull it tight so there's some tension on it. And come over here with your staple gun again. One, two. Bring it back over. One, two. And then maybe once more. So you make the letter N or the letter Z. When you're completely done, if you want to, you can go ahead and tie these off. Okay. Now generally what most people are going to do over top of this, they're going to add some burlap, then probably some deck pads so you don't feel the springs. Then most likely they'll add some foam, maybe a one inch foam in this case. A little bit of batting, whether it be polyester batting or cotton batting. And then lastly, the fabric.